So I've been testing the Canon EOS RA, uh, but I tested it through a telescope from my light polluted backyard. And, and honestly, there's not much of a difference between this camera and a regular modified DSLR when it comes to shooting through a telescope. Where this camera really excels is when you use it with lenses, doing some wide angle work on a star tracker. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. And I can't really do that well from home because of that light pollution. So we're going on a quick road trip to uh, just the darkest place we can get to in about 30, 40 minutes, uh, just to get some test shots through the camera lens, through the 85 millimeter F1.4. It is Christmas Eve, Eve, December 23rd. I wanted to do some wide angle camera lens work. So to do that, it's better to be under dark skies and not in a light polluted backyard because you get some horrible vignetting and gradients when you try to shoot unfiltered wide angle shots through light pollution. We're driving about 30 to 40 minutes away from home, get the benefits of the darker skies there and shoot some wide angle constellation style shots with this Canon EOS RA and the 85mm f1.4. I've also got the Skywatcher Star Adventurer that I'm going to use to do some track shots and I brought a little remote shutter release cable so I could do one to two minute exposures if I want to but if I'm going to use that fast aperture of f1.4 on the 85mm lens I won't be going longer than 30 seconds anyway. Hoping for some good test shots under some darker skies if it stays clear but it looks pretty good right now. Here's a look at the RA here. It looks just like the EOS R. It's basically the same mirrorless design. It's actually the exact same camera other than the fact that it's sensitive to H alpha and a few other things like that 30 times live view. But here's that 85 millimeter F 1.4 lens attached. It's an absolute monster. Look at this, the size comparison of the lens to the camera. I've been using this camera for a few days now and it's pretty comfortable. You know what? Coming from a background of using Canon DSLRs, it's really not that different. It has a few cool extra features and everything and the touch screen is nice. It's been a pretty comfortable transition to start using this camera over the DSLRs, even the Rebels I was using in the past. There's a lot to like about using a camera like this. Like you could never, you would never use a dedicated astronomy camera in a situation like this. I'm literally gonna set up on the side of the road with a small star tracker to get some constellation shots. And with a fast lens like this and the, the user interface and the controls of this mirrorless camera, I'll be able to take some impressive shots really in about 10 minutes time. Hopefully I'll collect some serious signal to create a, a nice image in the brief amount of time that I have under dark skies out here. See, the only problem with adventures like this when you bring your wife along is that she gets bored and she's trying to watch Netflix on her phone because we are literally just waiting for it to get dark. And I believe she has some Christmas shopping to do after this too, right? But it's, it's only 5.23. We got lots of time. I said we'll be home by 6. We'll be home by 6. We're not going to... If we left now, we'd get home at 6. Just a couple more minutes. Here's the clear outside app showing uh, the Bortle scale class for the location we're at. It's a class 4 here, so this is as dark as it gets close to home. We're about 35, 40 minutes from home. And uh, you can see there's a few clear hours uh, tonight. So just waiting for it to get totally dark out. It's 536, probably another 10 minutes. And I can start taking some shots. And then we can get the hell out of here. All right, so what you're looking at here is the live view display screen on the EOS RA. You can see the constellation Cassiopeia there and the trees that I'm looking at. This live view looks like a picture. It's, it's insane, actually. Watch when I adjust the focus ring here and those stars go in and out of focus. So you can see how easy it is to find a really precise focus when you have a sensor with this kind of sensitivity. If that weren't enough, I'll go into magnifying glass and we can go in on an individual star. So let's choose this one here and I'm gonna zoom in and we can focus there. We're at five times zoom right now 
but let's go in even further. I can use the dis touch display to, to swipe around and I'm gonna go even further to 30 times live view. So it's you know pretty shaky at this at this zoom, but as you can see when you're focusing, you can really get those pinpoints and then get popped back out and know that you're in focus. So I'm just gonna take some shots of Cassiopeia here. About 10 seconds long, I've got a two second delay. I'm on the star tracker, so these are track shots because they would show star trailing if, it, if they weren't at 85 millimeters. And I've got it set to F2 to just, just to sharpen things up a little bit. And you'll see the image come through. There it is, pretty much how we were looking at it on the live view display screen. I'll probably go a little bit longer and try some 30 second shots and stack a few of those. It's freezing out there now. We need to stop at Tim Hortons on the way home. The temperature dropped, it cleared up, it's finally dark out. I started shooting the double cluster in Perseus. I could see the heart and soul nebula. I was shooting at ISO 800 and F1.6. So I was soaking in a lot of light, just 30 second track exposures on the Star Adventure. That's gonna be the shot. And what time is it? It's 6.22. Yeah.